Hi, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. It is imperative in this season that we are in the Word of God. Don't take it for granted. Do not take it for granted. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have family members on this channel who are talking about changes to their word. We know that there are universities that are long-standing in the history of America. And, and I know this happens all over the world. This is not just for the U.S. This is all over the world. They're changing the word and they're doing it deliberately. And it's going right along with the culture. Brothers and sisters, there are many who have claimed, even from the pulpit, to be saved and born again, and they are not. They never have been. There's also, we're seeing as the veil is being thinned, I'm gonna turn this down so we're not interrupted. As the veil is being thinned, as we are transitioning from this dispensation, we're told about the apostasy, the wholesale rejection of Christ in the end times. We are already seeing an apostasy a rejection of Christ and everything about him. We're already seeing it. So we're in every way we're transitioning. We're seeing those things. When colleges and universities, the heads of religious and theological studies are doing things like querying the Bible. When I can go into a well-known uh, store and look for clothing for my granddaughter and think I'm in the girls section and be in the boys section when we have major companies like CoverGirl that have cover boys who are boys but are wearing makeup. You know where I'm going with this. When we have, have cities, major cities and states that now you can declare that you are either male, female, or X, non-binary. When our children are being taught that there's something like 47 different genders or different, on the, there's 47 different levels on the gender spectrum. The culture has infiltrated the church. Here's what many people don't know. Globalist, wealthy, wealthy globalist. People like George Soros are buying, yeah, buying, they're buying evangelical leaders. They're bribing, they're paying for. And in the pulpits, we already know, I'm going to use the U.S. In the U.S., 50% of churches no longer believe that the word of God is without error and infallible. Nor do they believe, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We are, I talk to these pastors, we are living in such times. We are so close to the bridegroom coming, to the rapture of the church. Don't take for granted that we'll have this written word with us at all times. Hide it. Hide it in your heart that you sin not against God. May it be, as Psalm 119 says, be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. I am so thankful for the men and women who poured into my life as a boy and then as a young man and being able to hide his word in my heart. It's alive, Hebrews 4.12 says, and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. His word shall not return unto him void. You have the Pope and evangelicals who have leading Protestant leaders in Christendom who are now saying they're no longer Protestant because there's no protest against the Catholic Church. There are, there's a unity and a coexist, an ecumenical movement that embraces every antichrist spirit, every religious spirit, every un unitarian spirit, 
brothers and sisters, I've seen this coming for a long time. It had to be, let me go back. My wife and I, for years, we work with youth and we also plan at churches. And then when the church got to a place where it could afford a pastor, a pastor was brought in. I had good corporate jobs and I was bivocational. I remember going to um, a, a session for church planners. And they asked us, I, I didn't really like this, but they put paper in front of us, rolls of paper, and they asked us to draw out how we got our salvation. <laughs> we, you know what? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves, not by works, lest anyone should boast. It is the precious blood of Jesus shed on the cross at Calvary that paid the debt for my sin. He died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. I believe, I believe. I recognized at five years old that I was a sinner in need of a savior. I believed on Jesus and I called on the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13. You call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. You believe, you call on him, praise God. We are saved by grace through faith. Well, this was a meeting of all of pastors, of people who were going to plant churches. And there were two ladies that were going to plant a church. And there was a table full of people. And so I'm like, really? So I just drew a cross because I didn't know, you know, we were going to have to talk about it. And when it came my turn, I talked about what, what the truth from God's word is, what his word says. 2 Corinthians 5.21, he who knew no sin became sin that I might become the righteousness of God. Jesus paid the debt for my sins. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, the lady was two seats away from me and she was drawing steps. And she was drawing all kind of crazy things. And so we were supposed to question each other. And I could, man, she was glaring at me when I, you know, I was talking about Jesus. And so I said to her, well, well you know, what, what does your mean? And she said, well, I'm still working on my salvation. I was like, what? Now, there was another man with me that I knew that was planning in an adjacent community. He's like, Pastor Tim, Pastor Tim, maybe you should be quiet. I'm like, no, 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 I have to ask. I said, what does the word say? And I have my word. And it came out of her and she said, up until recently, I believe that was an evil book. She called the word of God evil. I'm like, whoa, whoa. You're someone who's credentialed as a licensed or ordained minister and you're going to plan a church? Yes, she said to me. She was so angry. And she said, I just recently realize that there was some truth in that some truth some truth are you crazy now the people at the table were like okay okay just don't talk about this I'm like, this was not just i i wasn't meeting somebody at in and out burger here this was i like in and out burger by the way this was someone that was going to co as labor to plant a church how can you lead someone where you haven't been? And she said, well, we have to work. I was like, oh, well, okay. So it got pretty loud because this was a group of pastors and, and maybe I did, you know, I had, we have to be careful, but I believe it was a righteous indignation that was coming out, brothers and sisters. And I have since prayed for that woman. She and her friend, leader said, oh, you, brother, just everybody's at a different place. I'm like, these are, this isn't, do we soul sleep or not soul sleep? And we don't, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. But if you believe that and you are saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption, you are born again. I, I don't care that there are some differences, but we're talking about a foundation. She didn't, she didn't believe the word of God was, was without error or, or infallible. She didn't believe it was the inspired. She didn't believe in the verbal plenary inspiration of scripture. And... Furthermore, she didn't believe that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man cometh unto the Father but by him, John 14, 6. And now, and that was, okay, I'm going to go back. I think that was 2006 that that happened. Brothers and sisters, we are the frogs that have been boiled in the proverbial pot. Now, you have, the culture has infiltrated the church and praise God that we are not saved 
by works nor kept by works, but we are saved for works. And we need to reach out to the lost and and praise God. I thank God. You know what? Even today, even today, as I was out and about, I had the opportunity during my breakfast time to witness the gospel of grace and see and actually, it's pretty fantastic when you think about it because I believe something like more than 80% of people come to faith, who come to faith, who are born again. Th these are statistics and don't, but before the age of 12, and this woman was 64 years old, had rejected the gospel all her life and through conversation with the loveliest bride in all the land of myself, we saw her ag admit that she was a sinner in need of a savior. And we saw that work of Holy Spirit regenerate her as she believed that Jesus always was, laid down his glory, lived a perfect life, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary, and then died, was buried, and rose from the dead. And she called on the name of the Lord. Oh, how beautiful that is. And yet, you have globalist the, the Antichrist system, and you have leaders among the globalists who are literally paying off evangelical leaders, pastors, ministers, evangelists. This is why it's important to hide the word of God in your heart. Do it now. And if you have not called on the name of the Lord and you're saying, you know what, Pastor Tim, I've been listening, I've been following, and I believe it is time for you to call on the name of the Lord. Believe on Jesus and the fact that he died and shed his precious blood. It was all sufficient once for all for all your sins. Well, I want you to know God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Shalom and have an awesome rest of your day. And for my Messianic brothers and sisters, Shabbat Shalom.